This is where the first person in Germany confirmed with coronavirus was infected. It was at a company training event here in the southern state of Bavaria a week ago. A Chinese colleague attended it, but after her return to Shanghai, she tested positive for the virus. According to local health authorities, a German colleague then started showing flu-like symptoms at the weekend. A test was carried out, and yesterday evening the results came back positive. The patient is now being monitored in hospital. Doctors say he is awake, responsive and without a fever. Authorities have said further protective measures have been put in place. The focus now is on the people who were in contact with the Chinese woman and the people who had contact with the infected German man, especially close contact. Health officials say the man is in an isolation room and is doing well. And DW's Emanuela Chase is on the story. She joins us now with more. Emanuela, what else was discussed at this press conference? Well, certainly the most uh, interesting information from that press conference was to learn more about uh, the way the infection uh, was spread. Now, this uh, woman uh, came from uh, Shanghai and she uh, stayed uh, only a couple of days in Germany between the 19th and the 23rd of January. But um, her parents uh, come from Wuhan, the affected region, and they visited her uh, shortly before her uh, German stay. And that's how the, the infection got to Germany. This woman didn't have any symptoms and only uh, on her way back from Germany, in the plane did she start to feel sick and then she was uh, checked by the sanitary, sanitary authorities back in Shanghai where she was diagnosed with the uh, coronavirus. So that shows that the transmission of the virus is possible mm. even during the incubation uh, phase uh, before uh, even any symptoms show. And one of the big concerns, of course, is how to prevent this from spreading. Now, what efforts are underway? Well, here in Germany, there are sanitary uh, checks for people coming from the affected areas in China uh, in five uh, different airports. There's uh, the, the biggest airport in Germany, Frankfurt, but also in Berlin, Munich, uh, Dusseldorf and Hamburg. Now, the authorities uh, say they're fairly prepared even uh, before uh, the outbreak because they were uh, training, they, they had uh, simulations and all measures uh, have been reviewed before uh, the first case was uh, detected. And the Foreign Affairs Ministry uh, issued a travel warning uh, for a German citizen and we're still uh, waiting for a decision uh, whether or not to repatriate the 90 German nationals uh, currently in Wuhan. Okay, so I mean that's the situation on the ground right now in Bavaria. How about the country in general? Well, uh, so far, um, health officials don't think that for taking measures uh, such as wearing a face mask, for example, uh, are necessary. But they warn that uh, even uh, 15 minutes face to face uh, with someone infected could suffice to contract the virus. Uh, now, it's quite difficult to differentiate the symptoms of the coronavirus to those uh, from those of a regular uh, flu. But uh, like I said, uh, there were preparations uh, as uh, uh, preparations that were ongoing uh, even uh, before the Chinese uh, outbreaks, and they were reviewed. Uh, before even the first case was detected uh, here in Germany and all the people who were in touch with the person uh, infected, uh, with the woman who was infected have been isolated. We're talking about uh, 40 people currently uh, under operate, uh, observation and the man uh, currently staying under observation is not feeling particularly uh, ill. So, uh, so far the health authorities say that with normal hygienic precautions like washing hands or regular airing of rooms, uh, this should be uh, sufficient to prevent the spreading of the virus. Emanuela Chase, thank you. Thank you. Now, other than Germany, more than a dozen countries have confirmed cases of the virus. In China, the death toll has jumped to 100, with more than 4,500 cases confirmed. Scientific studies suggest that each infected person passes the virus on to two or three other people on average. Entire cities are already under quarantine, and now the government has asked people to delay foreign travel. For millions, worrying and waiting are the new normal. Well, spreading almost as rapidly as the coronavirus itself is false information about it. TW's Peter Roladal joins us now with more on that. So, I mean, we have these incorrect claims spreading on social media. What are they? Well, we're seeing a pattern that, unfortunately, has become all too familiar in situations like these. Uh, we're seeing, you know, false and misleading information that's kind of sprinkled with conspiracy theories. They're being spread to tens of thousands, if not millions, of people on social media. Um, it's to sow confusion and to foment fear and cement hatred, really. 
One example is, uh, you know, the Chinese eating habits um, that have been blamed for the outbreak. The Chinese, as you may know, in some parts of the country in particular, are known to eat wild animals. And so when it was reported that the virus may have come from bats, uh, videos like these started circulating. They falsely claimed that the outbreak started because people in Wuhan eat bat soup. Now, there are several things wrong with this. Bat soup is not a thing in Wuhan. Uh, these videos are, in fact, from the Pacific island nation of Palau, where bat soup is considered a delicacy. Um, Chinese scientists believe that the virus came from bats, but they made no connection to, to soup, uh, this particular kind of soup. And what may be most troubling is really that what these videos are doing is they're perpetuating this racist stereotype. Um, that's, especially here in the Western world, is still pretty widespread, that because they eat different things, they're somehow dirty, and so if they carry this virus, it's basically their own fault. And what are other examples are there? Well, one example uh, is, or one claim is, just that things are much worse. We see these also quite often, uh, so really blowing up the numbers hundreds of thousands dead, millions infected. Obviously, we know, at least right now, it's not true. Um, one claim in particular that's picked up steam has been fueled by the popular YouTube uh, conspiracy theorist uh, Jordan Sather in a tweet uh, that he posted last week. He called the coronavirus a, quote, fat disease, and then went on to note that a patent had been filed in 2015 for the coronavirus. It is true that a patent was filed in 2015, but it was for a different strain of coronavirus, and it wasn't, it was, you know, filed to try to develop a vaccine um, to, uh, to combat this avian coronavirus. That's not what we're looking at here, presumably. Um, also, it's important to remember the coronavirus is not one disease, it's a family of viruses, mm. uh, including SARS. So, Despite these claims being patently false, we are seeing them spread by tens of thousands, particularly the so-called anti-vaxxers, so people who believe that vaccines are somehow bad for your health. Um, they're picking up on this, on this conspiracy theory to say, well, it's the government that's behind it. Uh, they created the virus uh, to basically as a, as a plot to force people to get vaccinated. Um, it's part of a broader pattern that is to sow mistrust in government, the very government that a lot of people right now rely on to uh, for news and for information about how to deal with the situation. Um, often these false claims are surprisingly successful. What can people do to protect themselves against misinformation like this? Well, one, basically just don't trust everything you see online. That is true always, uh, not just in this situation. Several health ministries we're seeing have really stepped up and are, are being very active in debunking uh, these false information. So Australia, Malaysia, Singapore, the US, um, tech giants, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube are trying to uh, kind of stem the flow of uh, false news. They're trying to guide users to more reliable sources of information. At the end of the day, though, I think this really emphasizes again that the a lot of, you know, of this false information is still making it through. And so these social media platforms that many rely on for news, um, they can really, in situations like this, help make a health scare even scarier. Peter Roladal, thank you. Thank you so much.